So here we go, um, the section on guaranteed annuities. What we're going to do here is we're going to, in fact, look at a kind of mix between the annuity certain, as we know it, and the life annuity as we've been discussing it in chapter five. And that is often referred to with the concept a live annuity with guaranteed payment. So you, you see here in the first, first bullet what we're looking at, we're considering, for example, an annuity due of one euro per year, which is paid annually to a policyholder age uh, X. And the payments are guaranteed for a period of N years. So the fact that the periods, that the payments are guaranteed, that means that the payments are at this or, or these uh, payments during the first n years are not life contingent. So that means uh, the insurance company will pay these payments, whether the policyholder is alive or not. Right. So that's what this guarantee uh, being guaranteed what it uh, refers to. So then we're back in the case of an annuity certain. Right. There is an annuity certain. So the only thing we need to take into account at least for the guaranteed part, is just the financial discounting. We don't need to take the survivorship into account for this guaranteed part, right? So the payment that is due at, let's say, time K is going to be paid whether or not the policyholder is alive if the K is equal to 0, 1, up to N, or up to N minus 1, you could say, and is only going to be paid if X is alive, if K is equal to N, N plus one and so on. So what happens here at time N? Well, in the case of uh, an annuity due, uh, you could say um, the annuity due starts at time N, right? So the payment, if the payment is done at the beginning of the year, will in any case be done at time K equal to N, right? And then these, um, this guaranteed part with the period of n years that refers to these n first payments, which we're going to do at time 0, 1, 2, and so on, up to n minus 1, right? Um, so in the annuity due case, I can describe it uh, like I put it here with the two bullet bullets. I can let the k run to n, but in the case of an annuity, uh, of an immediate annuity, I would have to be a little bit more careful here about what's going on at time. So if I look at the present value random variable, then I, I'm going to split up this um, present value random variable and I'm going to distinguish based on do I end up in the guaranteed part of my life and of my annuity product or do I end up in the life contingent part of my life annuity product. So if the Kx, if the current of future lifetime takes a value uh, up to and including n minus one, so that means you die in the first n years of the product, what you're then going to receive or your beneficiaries are going to receive is the guaranteed part of the annuity, right? Because we know that the payments done at time zero, one, two, and so on up to time n minus one, they are guaranteed, they are going to be paid whether you're alive or not, right? So that means if you die in these first n years of the contract, the present value random variable can still be expressed by the present value of an annuity certain with n payments in total. And we can we see the actuarial notation here. It's the annuity certain with an actuarial angle, uh, duration, and n payments in total. But what happens if you die at time n? or beyond time n. So in that case, the current and future lifetime will take a value larger than or equal to n. And what's going to happen then is that the life annuity uh, uh, will kick in. So the first n payments will be done in any case. The last guaranteed payment will be done at time n minus 1. And the next payment will be at time n in the annuity due setting that will also be done in any case, right? But then the next payments uh, will depend on whether you're alive at that time or not. So we can denote this with the EPV of an annuity due. Um, of an annuity due, um, where the duration of 
the, or where the number of payments done is stochastic and is driven by this kx. Yeah? And in this particular case, we have as the number of payments this kx plus one, right? Because imagine that the kx um, takes a value equal to n, for instance, then the number of payments that will be done in total is equal to n plus one, because you'll have a payment at time zero, time one, time two, and the last payment will be done at time n, because then you will die between time n and n plus one, right? If the kx is equal to n plus one, for example, you'll have in total um, n plus two payments that will be done in this particular product, right? So we have two components here. There is the guaranteed part. If the policyholder dies before time n, and we know how many payments will be done, all the guaranteed payments will be done. And there is the life contingent part. Right? If the policyholder dies after time n, then we know that the duration, then we know that the number of cash flows, the number of payments done is dependent on uh, the exact or is dependent on the future lifetime of the policy. Okay, so that being said, this is a little bit um, abstract. So let's do this. Uh, let's put this into practice with one specific example. Uh, so I, I brought a known uh, prepared example. So it's not uh, something discussed in the book. So I'm just going to scroll forward. We already covered this one. So I'm going to look with you at this particular example. We have here our superhero, Mr. Incredible. He's uh, 35 years old and he won a special prize in the actuarial lottery. Uh, he won a life annuity of 10,000 euro each year for life. And the first payment starts at the end of the year. So the first payment starts at the end of the first year and the first 10 payments are guaranteed. So that means they're gonna be paid whether Mr. Incredible is alive or not. Mr. Incredible wants to know the value, so the expected present value of this price. Can we uh, figure that out, right? So this is a very simple exercise uh, to start with. So essentially, we're asked to look at a life annuity, paying at the end of the year, right? With the first payment being done at the end of the first year, the first 10 payments are guaranteed and the rest of the payments are life contingent. And we are asked to think about the EPV, so about the value of this particular product. So what are we going to do? Um, we're going to draw a timeline. So that's what I want you to, to see or to, to try yourself in this exercise. So here I visualize the cash flow for this particular uh, price of Mr. Incredible. So we've got 10,000 euro. Uh, payable at the end of the year and the first 10 payments are guaranteed right so be careful it's the first 10 payments that are guaranteed but payments are done at the end of the year so the payment is guaranteed at time one up to time 10. And so these payments to value them i do not have to take survival probabilities into account because i know that these payments will be done in any way right and then I know that after the first 10 payments, from payment 11 on, there is still this 10,000 euro payable at the end of the year. But now the payment becomes life contingent. So that means the payment will only be done if Mr. Incredible is alive at the end of the year. So here, if we want to value these payments, we need to take both the financial discounting into account as well as the, the survivorship, right? Um, good, so I can visualize the cash flow like this, and now I'm going to turn to the valuation of this cash flow using the instruments which we already learned. Armin, you've got a question? Um, yeah, I have a question regarding the, <clears throat> the 10 payments, because the, the challenge states that you get the first 10 payments, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but the first 10 payments are up to you're up to up till he's 46 right because these are nine payments the first 10 years or am i interpreting it wrong because the first payment is done at time one yeah uh and then the 10th payment is done at time 10. that's a ninth payment right 
Uh, did I picture it? Um, no. It's not the ninth payment? No, because like if you see at age 36, that's the first payment. So that's 35 plus one, that's the first payment. 35 mm -hmm. plus two, that's the second payment. 35 plus 10, that's the 10th payment. All right. And it's because we're paying at the end. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I see now, thanks. Yeah, that's creating probably your confusion because uh, we, we used a lot of examples where we pay in the beginning of the year. And if we would pay in the beginning of the year, then of course, you would go from age 35 to age 44, and then you would have 10 payments in total. But here it's slightly different, yeah? Okay, um, so that being said, let's write down the EPV of this product. And as you will uh, probably imagine, uh, valuing this product, you can do that by valuing the two components in this product. Uh, you have the guaranteed part, you will rely there on annuity certain uh, valuation stuff, and then you have the life contingent part. So for that, you will use life annuity valuation formulas. So here's what I'm gonna do. And the way how I write down the present value here is I'm gonna rely a little bit on, let's say, vector notation or, or cash flow notation, um, where I'm explicitly referring to a stream of cash flows over time. So what I'm doing here is I say, okay, I've got 10,000 at the end of every year. I'm gonna write my summation formula running from time zero to time uh, 10. So that's 11 time points in total, as Armin's question already indicated. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the first entry in my cash flow vector, I'm gonna put it to zero. So in fact, I'm leaving it out of the sum, right? So I'm using here a vector notation saying I've got a vector C, which uh, for which the first entry is a zero and it's then followed by 10 times a one as entry. And that allows me to write in a very nice way the present value of the guaranteed part of this annuity, okay? So it's completely uh, correct if you just say I'm gonna let the sum run from K starting from one to 10 and I'm just gonna use V to the power K there, that's also fine, right? Uh, but I just want you to convince yourself that this is indeed creating the present value of the cash flow in the guaranteed part. Yeah? And be careful about the timings of the payments and the way how you should calculate the present value. If we then look at the life annuity, we're gonna look at an EPV, right? Because we need to take survival probabilities into account. So we're ending up with an expected present value of the non-guaranteed annuity. And again, just to show you how that works here, I'm gonna rely on some vector notation and I'm gonna say, I can use my sum starting from K is zero to plus infinity. And the first 11 entries in the cash flow vector F that I'm using here, they're equal to zero. Such that actually my first payment is happening at time 11, right? Time 11. So I could also replace the sum with a sum that starts from 11 and goes to uh, plus infinity. And then I've got V to the power K multiplied with the uh, K year survival probability of a 35 year old. My benefit is again the 10,000 10, uh, euros. Okay, do you see this? Um, so this helps us to come up with a very flexible notation, a very general notation using the summation formulas. So if I put both components together, then I see that the expected present value of the price in this lottery can be calculated as given by the formula at the bottom, where the first uh, term refers to valuing the guaranteed payments. Uh, that goes from K equal to one up to 10. And then the last part refers to valuing the life annuity payments. And there the K starts from 11 and goes to uh, the uh, oldest um, time or the, the highest time point possible. So I could also just write plus infinity uh, for this uh, endpoint of my summation. 